Hello everybody, this is John Buck. I'm here to talk today in this Continuous Time Linear Systems video about systems. A system is any relationship between an input signal and an output signal. It takes in one signal, the input, puts out another signal, the output, and does something to it in between, usually, although it's, it's one simple example is the identity system that's just like a wire and passes things through essentially unchanged. Uh, but let's, uh, more generally, we think of a system as something that takes a function from the input and has a relationship that is our operation on that function to give me an output function. So let's uh, see what that looks like on the whiteboard. So again, a system is something that takes an input signal x of t and produces an output signal y of t by some relationship between them. And let's start by thinking about some examples of everyday systems that we see. For example, our cell phone is a system. And, and one way the cell phone works is the input signal could be my speech. Right, what I'm saying to you right now could go into a cell phone, and then the output signal would be radio waves. Right, It turns that speech signal into radio waves that are then transmitted to the cell tower to carry what I said somewhere else. Cell phones are, are pretty complicated, amazing systems, though, because they do more than one thing. For example, a cell phone will also take as input radio waves coming from a cell tower and turn it back into speech that it plays out. So it's got several possibilities that way. Another uh, good one we might think about is cruise control. If I have the cruise control in my car, right, the input signal is it's measuring my velocity of the car as it drives on the road. And based on that, it's going to change the position of the accelerator. Right? So there's an, another example. Uh, one sort of historically important, I should mention, are circuits. In fact, a lot of the things we talk about in continuous time linear systems began in the context of people trying to analyze circuits to understand them better, particularly frequency-dependent circuits. And so that input might just be a voltage signal. And the output might be another voltage. So it just transforms one voltage into another following some relationship that you learned a lot about in your circuits classes, how to define them for a circuit. And one last one I'll mention that's an important kind of say, uh, system is, is something called a, like a microphone. Right? A microphone is a special kind of system known as a transducer because it changes one kind of physical signal into another. So in the case of microphone, that input would be a pressure wave, and it transforms it into a voltage. So it transduces it into a voltage that, in theory, is like a, a copy of the pressure wave but turned into a voltage wave instead. Okay, so those are all general everyday examples of systems. Let's go on now and think about, well, if a system is a relationship between two functions, how does that look when I write one down? Uh, so you know, here's a very simple example of a system. y of t equals 3x of t. And what I'd like you to do now is, is pause the video for a second and think about how would I explain or, or conceptually talk about this system without using equations. How are the input signal and the output signal related here without having to rely on equations? Okay, so now you're back. One way to say this is the output is three times the input signal, right? The amplitude of the output signal is three times the amplitude of the input signal, right? The three is outside the function, so it tells us what is happening to the amplitudes. Or in general, we could say this is an amplifier, right? This is a signal that the output is an amplified version of the input. But other than that, it's the same thing. Nothing's done to the time axis. It's just scaled vertically if this were on an oscilloscope. How about another example? Well, now the, in, in this new example, y of t equals x of t minus 4. Again, take a second to pause the video and think about how you would describe this in everyday terms without math to start practicing that skill and then come back. Okay, now that you've thought about it for a second, how would you describe the system? One very simple way is to say it delays the signal by four, right? That the output is a version of the input that's been delayed by four samples, or I'm not four samples, but if t four in time, depending on the units of t, which we haven't said here. It could be four seconds. It could be four years if t is represented in years, but it is a delay, right? It's shifting things if I look at it to the right or delaying them. All right, one last example. Well, 
And this one, because things are continuous in time now, rather than having differences in time like we did of n minus 1, we take derivatives. And that sort of fits with the whole stuff that we've seen before in circuits, that, that circuits are things that tend to work with scale versions of signals or derivatives of them. So I have dy dt plus ay of t equals b times x of t. So how does the input and output of this related conceptually? Well, it's not necessarily apparent if you just look at this. I mean, we can say the derivative of the output plus the scaled version of the output has to be equal to a scaled version of the input. But you know, that doesn't give you a lot of insight into how this kind of system is going to work. And so we'll see more as we get involved in the mathematical tools of the class, how that can be helpful. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video then is to go on about the types of systems or the functions of systems we see. So pretty much every system we're going to see in this class falls into one of these four categories. It's a filter, it analyzes something, it synthesizes something, or it modulates something. So it's very helpful when you're working in the class on a problem sometimes to step back and look and say, well, which of the four types of systems or kinds of systems is it? And those are basically based on the kinds of things as engineers we want systems to do for us as part of a larger overall design we're making. So remember from last semester, what does a filter do? What, when I talk about having a filter, what does it do? Right, we saw of last semester, a filter is something that keeps or even amplifies a desired part of the signal while attenuating other parts. For example, a low-pass filter keeps the low frequencies in the signal while attenuating or removing the higher frequencies that are above the cutoff frequency of the filter. Similarly, a high-pass filter goes the other way, right? It keeps the information or keeps the parts of the signal that are above a certain frequency while removing the, the low frequency part. Another, the next one is an analysis system. An analysis system is something that breaks a complicated signal into simple parts. An example we saw uh, in the previous class, and we'll see again in, in the continuous time version this semester, is a Fourier transform. It takes a complicated time signal and tears it apart and tells us how much of each frequency, each simple single frequency signal, is in there, right? So we break it into, it breaks this complicated time domain waveform into simple complex exponentials that we can work with easily in the frequency domain. The other side of that coin is a synthesis system. Right, a synthesis system is one like a musical synthesizer puts frequencies together to make a note or a chord. The synthesis signals system is one that combines different signals to make a new signal. They might be simple things like in the inverse Fourier transform, right? It tells us how much of each frequency to include and how much phase to give it to build the time domain signal. We want make a new time domain signal. So that fits with the idea of the inverse Fourier transform being like a recipe that we're going to make a new signal out of the old ingredients. And then the last one uh, is, is not as common as the first three, but is important, and we'll see later in the semester, is, is something that's a, a modulation system that modulates signals. Another example of this a modulation system is that it embeds information. What it does, it embeds information from one signal into another signal. So an example we'll see later in the semester is amplitude modulation, like for AM radio. It takes a speech or music sound and embeds it onto a carrier signal that can then be transmitted electromagnetically easily to your, your radio in your car or your home. And so that's the idea of modulation, is taking two signals, one of which has information in it, the other is generally thought of as a carrier, embedding them together to make a new signal that carries that information to you. Okay, so those are basically the four kinds of things we want to do with systems as engineers. We want to use them to keep some part of the signal while getting rid of the rest. We want to analyze a complicated signal into simple parts, or take those simple parts and synthesize them back into a new signal, or we want to modulate information on one signal onto another carrier signal. All right, so I'll stop this video here, and then uh, I will see you next time in the next video.